Hey, how is everyone doing today? So in today's video, we're going to do a video about the EverDrive GBX7, seeing how it works on the analog pocket, as well as checking it out on original modded hardware, such as the Boxy Pixel Game Boy Advance and a DMG that's also been modded as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to transition over to the computer where I show you some of the different EverDrives, the uh, prices, the eBay stuff, all that good stuff. Show you a quick setup, what you have to do. And then we'll move it back over to the analog pocket, show you some of the issues and um, you know, show you some of the other stuff on the other hardware as well. Now, without further ado, if you haven't already, please leave a, a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone for doing it so far. It's, it's been amazing. Thank you everyone. And let's get into the video. All right, so we are here on the computer. So I'm going to, like I just mentioned already, we're just going to go over the different EverDrives for the Game Boy. We're going to go over where you can find some, if you can find some. And we're going to go over just a quick setup, you know, download and all that good, good stuff, you know. So we'll start off on his website. This is his website, K-R-I-K-Z-Z.com, Kirkaz.com. Now, here you can find plenty of other EverDrive products. I've gone over this website before in prior videos, but real quick, we'll just show you how it looks. This is pretty much it. You'll have EverDrives for just about every type of retro console that you could think of, at least the popular ones. And we'll be talking about the GBX7. This is what I'll be using to show you. I don't have the X3 or the X5, I only have the X7. So, but we'll go over all of them real quick on the website. So, let's start off. Here we go, this is a GBX3, it's also out of stock. This is the cheapest version you can find. And I'm gonna make a totally different video talking about this compared to the Easy Flash. Because there are some benefits, there are some drawbacks, but that's for a totally separate video. For this video, we're just gonna be focusing on the EverDrive. Now, right off the bat, this is how it would look. Use You can still use cheat codes, instant loading, all that good stuff, low power consumption. A software reset to the menu, uh, micro SD support, 1000 files per folder. So, this is a very good alternative if um, a price is an option. Now, let's go over to, oh, look here, even give you some comparison. Uh, the biggest comparison minus the uh, X7 is the save state and the in game menu and the RTC. The X5 is the reboot into the menu, save progress stored, and XRAM. Okay, so. That kind of just pretty much said the difference already. So the looks like right there, the difference is gonna be the uh, no, no, it's gonna be the X5 minus the reboot to the menu. Same thing here. Now this one is fifty-five dollars, a little more expensive, not much. So I guess I and this day and age, it's probably what you can find as well. These things are getting harder and harder to get. So if you can, if you really are into EverDrive, I recommend grabbing them as soon as you see them. Now here is his top, top uh, EverDrive product. As you can tell, it's a substantial jump. Went from $55 to $130. So this is not a cheap flash card by any stretch. This is a very good flash card, but it is not cheap. And there have been issues, and I've had issues with using this with the analog pocket, which kind of sucks. But you know, what can you do at this time? Nobody has come up with a fix, a permanent fix, other than the ones that I've seen. So here we go. This one here is the best that he's got. So you have eight megabyte ROM size, which is very big. So it's good for homebrew stuff. Uh, in other games, like a uh, Pokemon trading card game, for example, that one's a four megabyte game. It's still a pretty big game. Now, obviously, just like all the other stuff, you'll have you know micro SD support, all all that good stuff. But you have an RTC, which is a big deal, especially for the Pokemon games. You'll have a safe state, which is also a big deal. Uh, not as big as you might think at the moment if you have an analog pocket, because that does have its own safe state, which I'll get into that later as well. But if you're just playing on original hardware or modded hardware, like a boxy pixel Game Boy Advance or something like that, this will definitely, definitely come in handy. You know, cheat codes, all that, you know, all that good stuff. So here is the EverDrive GBX7. This is the one that I will be using. Now, there are some other places. EverDrive, uh, everdrive.me, you can buy them if you can find them. This one, they've been out of stock as well, but it's the same price. So if you can find them here, I definitely recommend picking them up. I don't know, let's see if he has, 
Let's see if there are any of the other ones. This is X3. Out of stock. Like I mentioned, these things are kind of getting hard to come by. If you go over to eBay, of course, people are scalping this. Looking at $177, so over nine bids, eight days left. So this is probably going to go past that price, which is crazy. Uh, let me see if I see any other ones. Here's an X3 that was $40. Now it's $30 up with one bid. So look look at this. This, this is just getting crazy, these prices. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick install. So let's go to his OS update. Uh, the latest OS update is 12 uh, 29 2001 which is 1.05 doesn't fix any of the problems you have with the analog pocket unfortunately but just for the purpose of in getting this ready let's just put it in there so let's see I already have the micro SD card obviously you want this formatted to already here it is uh, fat 32 just keep that in mind you need fat 32 already formatted let's open this up Pretty simple you just drag and drop this there that's not crazy that's it I'm gonna have some ROMs ready there I'm gonna be testing different ROMs homebrews Game Boy games Game Boy color games all that stuff so when I go over to unlock pocket I'll just show you all there that way you guys can just get a look at it and a feel for yourself like I've mentioned this has issues with the unlock pocket and you'll see it so I might kind of go back and forth between the uh, boxy pixel and original Game Boy Advance has been modified just that way you guys can you know get to actually see it in action now I've heard this is what I've heard that the latest one actually does work on the analog pocket without any issues it seems like he changed some of the hardwares that's what I've heard I can't verify that I don't have the latest one I only have one that I bought two years ago so that's what I've heard that it will work on the analog pocket. I can't confirm that. Just I'm just stressing that. I know this is like a hundred and thirty dollar uh, product. If you buy it somewhere else, it's even more expensive. So I don't I don't want to say it works hundred percent because I really cannot verify that at the moment. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna transition over to the pocket and some of the other stuff and just show you how it looks there. Okay, so we're back. So. First, let's just try it on the analog pockets. Now, I've had issues with the analog pocket and the EverDrive that has not been resolved yet. So I'll have to do some of the workarounds just to get it to work. Now, let's just start it up right away. This is gonna be a, uh, oh, let's see. I get the SDIO error. This is the error that I get. And I'm not the only one who gets this. Several other people get this that I've seen online. So it's not just me, unfortunately. Now, some, one of the ways to get around this is just using an original one. You just pop it in, okay, and you start it up. Make sure it's not too loud. It's as loud as it could be. Huh? Okay, so this is an original DMG with a modded screen. There we go, everything's set back to default. It's pretty simple. Now, what one of the ways to get around this is just, especially when you first start it up, uh, let's do let's start with the game we game especially because it's a DMG. So we'll try Donkey Kong Land 3. It's very simple. We just hit select and I mean, sorry A and select start. This is where you put the cheats. You have to put in the code. So it's game genie. You have to look that up on the internet just to get it going. But let's start it up. See the light will start flickering. That's how you know it's working. And it restarts. It's very quick. It is very quick when it comes to doing this stuff. So this is how it looks on a DMG Game Boy. So, now that it's already started up there, it will work no issue on the analog pocket. Just gotta press start. So, start it up. There we go. This is how it looks on the analog. And a way to get this going, if you have the issue that I have, you just press start and it loads it up. There is another workaround that doesn't require an original Game Boy. And I'll show that in a second. It's a little tedious, but it does work. At least good for on the go stuff. So here's Game Boy games. Works just fine as you can tell. This still has the best screen out of all the stuff modded or non modded. This is still the best. It's really, really a nice screen. It plays very well, it plays just like the original game. Now, like I've mentioned, there are people who are reporting that the 
newer revisions of this are working. I cannot confirm that since as you can see, I have that issue. Okay. So one of the other ways to get back to the menu, just press it. There's a little, uh, right there, so there's a little trigger. Click it. And it takes you here. This is where you can save state, load state. So let's just try to save state real quick. Save. See if it works. Okay. And now this, all right, okay, I died. Perfect. Let's press it. Okay. Let's load. That's it. Very simple. Now, granted, if you have the analog pocket, all you gotta do is this, the save state, there you go. You also have a save state there too. Let's see if I can just die or something. Of course, I don't want to place to die, here you go. It's one, and it's just full. Okay, you died. Okay, analog button down to load. There we go. So it works just like the save state on the EverDrive. Now, let me see if I can quit it and try a different game. Play. So it should lo load just fine. Yep, there it is. Now, this is where the issues always come in. Let's try Pokemon Red. It'll give me that error. Oh, see? D5. That's the error. Okay. No files. And now it says no files. So, so if I get this, you got to quit the game. Put it back. These errors are very annoying. Okay, ROMs. Let's see happens if I press start? Nope, it's still Donkey Kong. Okay, actually I could just hit this. That's another cool feature. Uh, look, it's giving me issues now. Okay. Let's see if I can try the bypass again. Hmm. See, this is what I get. Okay, let's try it again. I've done it before where if you just keep trying, eventually it will work, but maybe it was the SD card that made it work last time, but I've heard of it, it worked for other people too. There are no files, see that's new. I haven't seen that version of the error. So let's try a different game using the boxy pixel. Obviously, it's not full screen. It's a Game Boy Advance. Roms. Let's do Pokemon Red. When all else fails, this, this method always works. So, apparently, what it looks like the problem is, is it's a problem in loading the game from the SD card to the EverDrive itself. That's why you don't see flashing red. So, when you do it the other way, you bypass that. It loads it onto the EverDrive using an original Game Boy, and you can just press Start, and then it goes to Pokemon Red. This is a pain in the... <laughs> this is a pain, to say the least. And when I do my comparison to the Easy Flash, this will be the biggest... the biggest uh, problem you see. Okay, it's a little glitch right there, too. It's a weird glitch. Okay, let me show you one of the other things too. You know, it takes you back here and go back to the menu from here. Now, let's see if I can try it with this. Okay, so that actually did something. Okay, so. What happens if I press start? Get the error. File to RAM. File to RAM to file. Let's try. RAM, file to RAM, interesting. I didn't see that one before. Get all type of errors on this. Not make for a very good analog pocket video. Yeah, same errors. What happens if I press start now? Takes you back to Pokemon. It's very finicky on the analog pocket, let me tell you. Very finicky. So, now, change it up again. Let's put the more color. And for that, we need to continue using this just to load it. You can see this is really a pain. It's a very good product. I wish it worked properly on the analog pocket. Considering the analog pocket says it can use almost all the stuff. 
and he already released it that this is on you know like pocket to do an update and they have done no updates even to the original software in a long time so here we go let's try a japanese game on the everdrive just load it here it's a bigger game this is a four megabyte one so that's why it takes a little longer there you go Like I said, it could go up to eight megabytes. All right, loading it. The bigger the game, it's not going to be instant loading whenever it's the bigger, bigger game size. This is a good way to test out Japanese games. It's just, they're all compatible anyway. But this is mega, megabytes, I believe. just fine it looks really good on the pocket uh, this does have RTC which I'll show in a different game <laughs> I don't know the characters okay Okay, I don't know what I even picked. You can tell, Game Boy Color works just fine. Now this is gonna be the same effect on the original hardware as well. So this is where you wanna keep those things in mind where if you have a original hardware, this is very good. The save state is amazing if you don't have an analog pocket. Okay, so that's one of the biggest things that I would recommend, especially for original hardware. I've had no compatibility issues with original hardware. Prior to me getting an analog pocket, I was always using the EverDrive. Okay. It's just really a pain to, if I want to switch games, do that. So that's where, that's the biggest drawback at the moment. Hopefully, if that gets fixed, then that's, that's a different story. I'll show you some of the other stuff you can do with it too. This is another Game Boy Color game. Metal Gear Solid. This is a very expensive game, mind you. Finding find the original version of this. It kind of reminds me of um, Perfect Dark too. A very good job for a Game Boy game. I mean, let me tell you, just having it on the Game Boy game is incredible considering what you do in Metal Gear Solid. And this is a Game Boy color game. Also, it's Perfect Dark. Funny to see those games played there. A lot of talking though before you even get to the game. Okay, let's just let's at least move around first. There we go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Back to the menu. Let's see if I can even try some of the other stuff. Let's go to a graphics. Mm -hmm. Same error. It's funny, it shows the games that were just played. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. It's very annoying. I tell you, it's very annoying. Okay. Try another game. Let's try. I think we're going to go to the graphics hack. These are the ones that improve the way the games look. Kirby Dreamland, for example. I wish I could show you better on the on the analog pocket. That would be nice if it actually worked on the analog pocket. But there you go. I know, I know the pink is more pink, but I didn't create this game. So <laughs> just in case people ask, I did not create the game. 
got that comment before. The Everdrive on original hardware works beautifully. On original hardware, let me stress original hardware. Okay, so that, I could just hit back to the menu. Okay, that's to the graphics one. This one I'll show on the analog pocket. So this one was just released a couple of days ago. This is the uh, Super Mario Land Deluxe. They just released a version two. Let's see how it looks. Oh, nice. Looks like maybe I didn't load the game right or something. Let me see. Nope, okay. No, oh, that one, interesting. Let's see if maybe that one works on the original hardware. That just means I might have not loaded the IPS file correctly. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Nah, same problem. Yeah, that just means I didn't load the IPS file. It's fine. So that was an error on my side, so that's on my bad. Now what I want to try and do, let's see a homebrew. Put it on this one. Now these IPS screens on this look beautiful. Now you have to do some modding on your own, which if you can see, I didn't do the best job. You gotta kinda gotta, gotta cut it. For the most part it looks good straightforward. But if you're a perfectionist, you might not like it. If you gotta do that work yourself. So here's a homebrew of Among Us. Let's try it out here. I just want to show it different things that it could do, different type of games. So let's see it right here. Here you go, as you can tell, this was done by, uh, let's see, original game by Inner Sloth. Cool. <laughs> Obviously they have no affiliation with the actual Among Us, it's just a fan made, kind of like the Pokemon ROM hacks you see. Does it have any sound? Let's see. No, I don't think it has any sound. No. I didn't hear any sound earlier either, so probably no sound. Sus. <laughs> Let's go down here. That's funny. Okay. Looks a little weird. It has no sound though, but I guess what are you going to do if it doesn't have any sound? So let's move this way now and let's see what else we have in this game. Okay, hold once. All right, let's see. Let's go this way real quick. So yeah, the game has no music like I mentioned, but it's pretty cool. It's just one homebrew. There are so many different homebrews you can play. That is pretty cool. Let's go back to the main menu. Okay, there we go. Now let's let's go to this is another homebrew that was actually sold in other areas. So you you can buy it, you can buy the ROM. Uh, but they actually have a physical version of this. I think it's Inco, I believe, that does it. Let's just see how it looks here. It probably looks better on a Game Boy Color. I, when I saw the picture of it, it had Game Boy Colors. But it looks pretty good here, too. Not really deluxe when it's black. You can change the color palette. So it's supposed to be a platformer. It's got better music. There we go. Uh -huh, okay. Oh, I died. You know, what, let's try this one on the analog pocket. It looks very nice on the computer screen. Let's see how it looks on the pocket. Okay, there we go. There, a nice color. Sound by Potato <laughs> Dash Tan. <laughs> potato Tan. It looks really nice, especially on this screen. This is. Top two, top two, girl deluxe. Okay, let's try it out again. Let's see if I can see how far I can get. Okay. Reminds me of some of those games you might play on the on your phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can see this game actually being kind of addicting. So let's go around it this time. <laughs> cool. So this is a homebrew one. As you can tell, it works. Oh, I died. <laughs> okay, so that one works. 
Obviously the freaking game doesn't work on the pocket because I have to do all that fun stuff. Let's show you some Pokemon ROM hacks and then that will be the end of the video. I'm gonna cover as much areas as I can. This is Pokemon Prism. Okay, and it's loading. Now, I will talk about something else in a second just to show you guys something. There you go. As you can see it works, works very well. Let's just move this over to the analog. All right, let's start it up here. Pokemon Prism. There are many different ways you can play this game, by the way. You can play on a reflashable modded cart. You can buy a reproduction cart of it. There are many different ways. Including easy flash, that doesn't give you an issue. Okay. So that works there. Annoyingly, let's try the last one. Okay. Let me just say, BoxyPixel makes some very good shells. ROMs. Pokemon ROM hacks. So let's do Pokemon trading card. This is a four megabyte one, so it's going to take a little longer to load. Now, I've made other videos showing how other stuff you could do with this game, too. So, look back, look back at my other videos if you want to check it out. Very cool. Just like the original one. Cool. That's right. So, this was the EverDrive. Has a lot of issues, as you can tell, on the analog pocket. At least, this revision that I have. Now the revision that I have is right here. This is model 17 revision C20.02.2018. Uh, I don't know, maybe he uses different components on other ones. I've heard sometimes this works on other people's. I just don't know what the issues are. One of the good things is also you can replace the battery very easy. Now, let me just show you one of the other good things. So I'm gonna switch out the shell so that way you guys can see what else you can do with this. Okay, so one of the other cool things is this, uh, the actual cartridge itself is compatible with other original uh, shells. So the, the shell, the screw placing is in the right spot. Now you'll have to do some modifications to the shell itself, obviously for the micro SD card, some other mo modifications inside just to make sure it fits flush. But this is a cool alternative. This game uh, wasn't working anyway, so it was something good to repurpose a shell. I personally like the way the Japanese Pokemon Red cartridge looks. So I literally just modified it and put an EverDrive in here. Still works in terms of the menu buttons. As you can hear, you can still click it. So this is definitely something else you can do if you want to play around with your EverDrive. It'll also work just fine on the, on the analog pocket when you do it. Yeah, it loads right up and it looks pretty nice. Now, obviously if yours works, then that'll be even better. But for me, this was working just fine. There you go, loading up Pokemon Training Card Game 2. So, can't think of anything else. Uh, in another video, I'll compare it to the Easy Flash, and I'll also compare it to the Analog Pockets itself, to be honest. It has GB Studios where you can play a whole bunch of games by itself without even needing, you know, without even needing this. So, right here, you can load up a bunch of games. So this is something everybody's got to look into as well, just to say, hey, maybe you don't even need an easy flash or never drive. You save yourself some money if you already have this. If you only like a handful of games, then there's really no problem with just playing off of the, the analog itself. So thank you everyone for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave any comments for anything you might want to see in the future. That is all. Thank you everyone. Have a good one.